What's up everybody? We're doing a book review for the Devastation of Ball. I've listened to it a few times actually on Audible because I've got some walk to work and back and um, I haven't actually had the pleasure of walking back but sometimes I get a extensive journey on my hands and I get a good half an hour, 40 minutes every day to listen to an audiobook and uh, the Devastation of Ball was a great listen. It's pretty pretty great as far as uh, apocalypse novels go which are the most accessible in my mind too people who are new to the warhammer uh, ip if you're just looking to find a novel where there's a thing that invades a planet and a bunch of space marines go and make daka 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 this ain't gonna steer you wrong there's uh, a lot of great space marine stuff in this there's a lot of great Tyranid stuff in this, and it's freaking epic. And that's what I'll say as far as, uh, not spoilers, but there's a lot of things that happen in this book that I find interesting, and we'll get to, like, a greater degree of spoilers as we go on. So, first thing is, like, you get a good look at, like, what is a Legion in disrepair, I guess. A, a Legion during, in... in in decline the blood angels compared to what they used to be to what they are now even with all of the blood angels, more blood angels than they could have hoped to gotten thousands on thousands on thousands of blood angels and the drastic dis difference that they sometimes go to lengths to describe in the book I think it's interesting, especially when they're uncovering the Blood Angels Fortress Monastery to house everybody. And I thought that was fairly awesome as a descriptor of, like, how much the Blood Angels have fallen to the point where it's like, yeah, we don't even know how much of our keep is there. Now, the other parts that I found particularly interesting are, like, the Knights of Blood and, uh... Gabriel, Seth, and the Flesh Terrors, and like the way that they portrayed the Black Rage, the, the, and the, the Red Thirst, and the Tower of Amarail, and whatnot. These things that I've always been interested in the Blood Angels, been like, how do they deal with people who pe deal with people who uh, drink the blood of an entire village and they you know, eat people and whatnot? It's very curious to hear about that one, and there's. I guess varying degrees of the way they would be received but the and and the uh, ultimate resolution between the Knights of Blood and the Flesh Tears is I what I find particularly epic about the whole thing because like the Knights of Blood and the charge of the prisoners of the Tower of the Tower of Amarillo is actually one of my favorite parts of the whole book that's fucking epic and also when they release hundreds of death company like it's hard to say that there's most epics except for like parts that are plainly epic this book does a really good job of giving you like lots of tear to dead but there's certain points where I'm like damn that's fucking sweet and at the end you get awesome chapter master and you know captain on demon on Swarm Lord action. Uh, what I'll say is a Blood Angel, uh, I think he's a chapter master, but he might, might be a captain, fights uh, Cabanda, and also uh, Dante fights the Swarm Lord. There's some epic shit. It's some epic shit. Uh, as far as books go, this isn't going to do anything for you like maybe reading a book of five rings would do but I, I you're not looking for that this is ultimate bolter porn I guess is what they would call it. this is just space marines smashing shit with thunder hammers and it's fucking pretty good at it actually it's really awesome top top marks Sci-fi is usually the apocalypse novels are. Deuces.